and this video is going to show you how to use Handbrake to rip a DVD so that you can use the digital files on your mobile devices. This is the DVD that I'd like to rip. It's a, a TV show from the 70s. It has four episodes and I'd like to watch those episodes one by one, not in one continuous block on an iPad. So to do that, I need some software, free software. So uh, if you go to the description of this video, there'll be a link to a document which has all the links and instructions for how to do this to accompany the video. But you need some software. You need Handbrake, which is a free open source software. And you get that from handbrake.fr. And there is a, a download link to select the version for your system. So if you've got a, a Mac, you would download the Mac version. And Windows, you need to know if you've got a 32-bit or a 64-bit version of Windows. Uh, to find out, certainly in Windows 7 and uh, XP and Vista, this is how you would find out. One of the ways, the only one I know. Um, the Start button, Find Computer, right-click it, and select Properties. And that tells me the system type, 32-bit operating system. So you need to download that one. Download and install Handbrake. The other bit of software you need, Handbrake also needs for it to complete the rips satisfactorily. It needs a copy installed on your system also of VLC Media Player. And you get that from videoland.org. That is also free. And you've got a download link directly there. If uh, you haven't got a Windows system, then you can go to the link Other Systems. And there are other uh, editions of the VLC media player. So if you've got a Mac, there's the link to download the Mac one. The other thing you need, you need one more file that uh, needs to be copied from the, the uh, video LAN site. This is the, the address for it here, uh, but it will be in the, in, the, in the description in the link for the other notes. You need to download that file, and as soon as I, I click this, it's going to download that file straight to my downloads folder. So I do want to save it. I don't want to open it. I want to save it. So I think I've already got it, but I'll, I'll take it again. And it's gone into the downloads folder where I can. There are two copies of it. Let's get rid of one of them. So this is the, that, the file in the downloads folder. That's the VLC media player and that's Handbrake. So they're the, the three files that you need to download. Uh, the only ones you install at this stage is Handbrake and VLC. Install both of those. Don't install the DLL one. Don't do anything with that one at this stage. Uh, so the, that's the, the software that you need to get this to work. Uh, before you can actually use Handbrake to start ripping, you have to, to take this file, this uh, lib file, DLL file, and change its name and copy it into the handbrake directory. And that's what I'm going to, to show you now. So it's a little bit down. So to find the file, you need to find where your system downloads files to. Now mine, they go into the downloads folder. Because I'm not using a straight version of Windows, mine is not going to look like yours. You will not find them in your documents library. They won't be in there. Uh, and it's it's not in this one, my downloads. I actually have to go into my C drive. So it'll be in your C drive somewhere. Submit to the downloads folder. So, But you have to know where yours have saved to. Uh, you also have to know where did Handbrake install itself. And if you install it as the default, if you just keep clicking next, 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 it will install it into the default directory, which you can see again from your Windows Explorer in your C drive. So find your C drive and look for program files and then click the, the triangle there and you'll find Handbrake. That's where mine's installed and that's where the standard installation of Handbrake will go. And if I click into that that way, there, they, there are all the Handbrake files. And it's in this location that I'm going to copy this uh, third file that we downloaded. So in the downloads file, this file 
has to be copied into the handbrake folder for handbrake to work. And this is because uh, of the Copy Protection Act, so that um, handbrake does not want to be sued, I presume. So they have disabled some of the functionality and these are the workarounds to be able to rip your media and be able to play it on multiple devices. So when you download this file, you have to rename it. You've already installed Handbrake and you've already installed the VLC player. To uh, rename a file in Windows, right click it and select rename. And what you need to do is take off the two and the dash. So what you're left with is this, libdvdcss.dll, that's the file we need. You need to copy this file now, so I'm going to select it. There are many ways to copy, but I'm just going to right click and copy. And then take that file and find where my handbrake uh, installation is, and it's in the C drive. C drive, program files, handbrake. And then right click anywhere in here or over the top of it, right click and paste. And there is the file. That's the file, the missing file that Handbrake needs to work. So you need to do that. You must get that file. You need to rename it. You need to copy it into your Handbrake folder or Handbrake will not work. It'll give you errors. And once you've done all that, we're ready to really open Handbrake. And rip this DVD. Let's look at how you actually do that. So Handbrake, I can get to it by going into All Programs. It's probably here too. But I'll go into All Programs and find it here, Handbrake, and start it. And let's just make it full screen. And at this point you might be tempted to uh, escape because it looks complicated and it, it and it could be if you really wanted to look at all the little bits in it, but if you just do the simple way, it works well enough. But so where am I going to put the DV, the uh, ripped episodes? Before you can identify the source, you need to uh, express where the output files will go. So once you've ripped a movie or episodes, TV episodes, where are they going to be stored temporarily? until you then move them into either a movies folder or, or into iTunes. So to do that, you go into the handbrake option. So it's tools and options and output file. So where are they going to go? Uh, and I can select browse and in the desktop, I've created a temporary folder called DVD rips. And that's where I want um, my files to be um, sent to. So that when I now select source, and there's the, the DVD, so I want Handbrake to find the DVD, to look through it and identify all of the movie tracks, TV episodes, special features, whatever's on that DVD. So I need to select source, and it should find maybe four TV episodes on this DVD in separate episodes. Sometimes they'll all be in one continuous block, if it was a DVD movie, you would find the movie. The longest file would be the movie file, and then the smaller files might be the, the special features. So in this case, it's TV shows, and it's found four, and they're here. Each one of those, well, it's actually got three. 30, the 32nd here could be just some sort of opening, um, like the opening titles or something, which I don't want, but I do want these three episodes and I want them separated. They're the three episodes that I'd like to rip. Uh, it helps if you have the DVD cover with you so you can uh, uh, put in the title of the, the uh, episode. So you can either have that off the cover or you can get that information. We go up here into uh, the Internet Movie Database, so the IMDb. We'll also give that information to you. So name of the DVDs who've done it. And it's the 1972 series. 
and it's season one. So it's going to tell me, and this is disc two, and it's, uh, it's from this one here, did he fall or was he pushed? And so it gives me the, the actual uh, episodes and I can use that information if for, for later on if I wanted to actually put all the, the metadata into iTunes. So you need to know the the name of the episodes because you're going to be putting this into the actual um, ripping information. So the first one is this one. This is um, the first episode and in here it gives me the name of what it, think, it thinks it's going to give me. It's who done it, disc two, number two. That's what the D22 is. And I need to change that to season one. It's episode four because it's off, off disc two. And it's called Did He Fall or Was He Pushed? And that's the first episode. It's already got the file extension. It's going to come out as an MP4. And now I have to select the device that I would, would think I'm going to play this episode on. Now you can, if you really want to get geeky, you can you can figure out all this stuff. What's the the uh, changing the sizes, etc. I, I just can't understand any of this stuff. So I have not touched ever touched anything in these things at all because I just purely want to rip it. So I don't have to worry about any of that because the presets take care of that. So if I picked Universal, Universal seems to work on everything I want to want to play this, this file on. If I wanted to play it on an iPad, then I could select iPad and it's going to change the settings for that specific device. Uh, I've played around with all of them and in the end, all I do is pick Universal. It plays on the iPad very well. It plays on the Apple TV 3 very well. It plays on the iPhone very well, and that seems to, to work. So I just keep that as the precess, and then I don't touch anything else here. Um, the next thing is to add that to the queue. I could, I could start ripping that now just by, by clicking the start, and it would rip that one episode. But there's three of them, and I'd like to do them all in a batch. So I can add them to a queue. And now I can actually show the queue, and it's coming up anyway now, showing the queue. There is now one episode in that queue, and then it tells you the, the, the stats of it, so how it's going to be uh, ripped in what audio and what uh, codec, and that, that uh, the M4V will be uh, able to be played in any Apple device, any Windows device also. Uh, for the second one, so I can leave that one minimized. To get the second episode, I'll just select it from here and put in the title again. It's giving me Who Done It One. So it's Who Done It Season One, Disc Two, Episode Three. But I need it a bit more specific than that. So putting in your correct naming conventions will ensure that media service will find it. And, and you might, if you're using a, a tagging program, that it's going to find the correct information. So you need to be fairly disciplined about how you name things. Episode five, and that one was head likeness. And I want to add that to the queue. Now I can show the queue, which should be here. But the queue's now got two in it. They're waiting. So I want the third one. That goes for 40 minutes, 20 seconds. And name that one. Season one, episode six. It's called Happy New Year. Add that to the queue. So I have the three queues down here. There's the three episodes ready to be ripped with that in there. Uh, and I, I, all I really need to know is that they're there. When I'm ready to rip, change something here when I've, when the ripping is done quit handbrake and there's all sorts of things you can do there I, I just generally leave it and just do encode either clicker here the green arrow here or start so encode and that starts ripping and encoding 
and it gives you a bit of a summary here of all of that information that you'd already put in and it should tell you how long to go so 17 seconds gone 33 32 minutes left for that episode and the speed of the rip depends on your system and how fast it is and how much ram it is so let's just pause there until they're all ripped and then come back and look at what you might do with the files uh, once they're ripped so you've got the, the episodes ripped now what do we do with them they're sitting in a folder on the desktop so in the folder called dvd rips are the three episodes sitting here and they are separated into separate mp4 files so what i need to do now is get them into itunes and tag them let's just open itunes iTunes, 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 and find, so I can get them both open at once, uh, drag, simply drag in the episodes, either you can copy and paste them into iTunes, or going into iTunes I could go to uh, add to library and find them that way. Uh, e easiest way is just find them where they were ripped so the default output location and I've already taken one across there's one there there's the second one so I just want to put that into iTunes I'm just going to drag it in uh, there's no point leaving them in the folder on the desk called desktop called DVD rips because the next DVD I do will also go in there and it'll be just one big mess alphabetical list of files iTunes will manage the process, particularly if you go to the trouble of tagging the files. You'll be able to find things when you use a media server. So this one is just about copied and all media files, when they get in, go into iTunes, are put into the movie section. And you have to tag them and put the right information in. Now there are a number of tagging programs. So if we go back here, if you have a Mac, there is a program called Identify 2. When you download that, you drag in the MP4 into Identify, and it will find all the information, all the metadata, the, uh, the artist, the, the album, the date of, of production, uh, the title, the episode number, all of that information that you need if you want to automate the process. For Windows, there is a, a program called MetaX, or tag chimp and there's the uh, the actual website for it that will do the same thing the user guide it tags it, it finds all the information it essentially is going to the two main uh, identification for media sites the TV database and the internet media database and those two programs will automate the process for you for tagging your media they'll tag it and then they'll drop it into iTunes automatically for you and save you having to do it in the manual way, which is the way I'm going to show you. The uh, IMD, imd.db.com is the Internet Movie Database, and you'll find any any um, TV episode, any actor, anything to do with movies here. So I went in to look for Who Done It, which is the, the name of the show, and I'm looking for a TV uh, title, not everything because there'll be a, a few of the uh, under that name. And it's the 2000, it's a 1972 show. And it has all the various seasons here. It has uh, the dates, but I know it's season one that I want. And, and if I was to do this manually, I would be going here to perhaps find a description of the episode. And it doesn't look like there is any in here. So for the, the first one, we, we want to also this one, Happy New Year. I can go into that episode, season one, episode six, and it tells me who's in it, uh, who the director was, the date it was produced, but it doesn't really give me any description because someone hasn't done it. So for me, I, it might not be much use to me that using the IMDb database for this particular DVD. The other one is the online TV database, the tvdb.com. If I search for who done it here, this one has album art and has a little bit more. This is what, what the um, 
what those tagging programs will actually come and look for. Who done it UK? Here. And down the bottom of the seasons here. So you can go into season one. And there are all the different episodes. So Happy New Year. And it tells me all of that information. So it actually gives a little bit of a description. So if I was doing this manually, I might just take that. I'll try to copy that. So I can put it into my iTunes. Uh, and there's not a lot of information here because this is a show. It was a long time ago. There's just not a lot. Obviously, nothing's been done with it that much in terms of tagging. But you need to tag it. So armed with that, here are the two uh, episodes into iTunes. And they go into the movies by default. And to manually tag them, you have to right-click and select Get Info. And this works in Windows and, and Apple uh, Macs, uh, uh, is just the same. And this is the, the summary. So this is the title that I gave it when I ripped it. The name of the, the TV show, the season, the episode, the title. Because that's going to make it organised. And there's the information that, the, the uh, encoding information that's come through from Handbrake. That tells me where it's got, where it's actually stored and where my iTunes library is. Uh, if I had a 5.1 surround sound, it would play digital 5.1 because that's the universal preset. It's given the, given the uh, the rip all these um, particular things. It's given it the the codec of H.264 and the size and the dimensions that comes with the preset. I haven't had to, to change any of them or set that. Um, you can go into every tab and be very particular about filling them in. A tagging program will do all this for you, and probably more precisely than I would. Uh, it depends on the DVD or movie as to what I would fill in in all these. Usually don't fill much in on them at all, or genre, because I don't ever look for um, in uh, my DVDs or TVs by genre or music, so I don't bother with that. But what I do do religiously is fill this section in, video. The show is Who Done It. And the episode is called Happy New Year. And it's season one, episode six. And now I can paste in the description of that episode. I do that religiously because that's what's going to organize those episodes. And I'm, when I'm going to, about to watch it in an Apple TV, it tells me a description of that episode. And then I have to change in the options, I have to change that to TV show. So it puts it into the TV section. Uh, if I was using the um, Identified 2 or Meta X, it would find the, the artwork and put that in for me. iTunes starts to organize it for you. So it has it, and depending on how you want it organised up here, I, want, I could organise it by show. Um, I like to have mine organised by name. And again, it depends on, on, on how you, uh, what you put in the name section. I always have mine with the name of the show. These ones were downloaded from iTunes, and the iTunes is the iTunes store. And that just puts the name of the, the title of the show. It's a little bit different in the way it sets up its data. If you wanted to really get the most out of streaming your media through something like Plex Media Server or Air Video Server or Apple TV, you need to organize it in iTunes. And it's, uh, it takes a bit of effort initially, but once you've done it once, you don't have to do it again. And this will now play happily because it's an MP4. Uh, if I went back to the desktop and Instead of playing it with iTunes, I could just play it in a media player so I could open it with the QuickTime player and it would just play because it's now a digital file. So I can play it in a number of things. Stop that. Instead of having to cart around the physical media. 